Hi, this is David, and this video is on what is called the second anointing. Now, you LDS people that watch, 99% uh, of you have never even heard of this. Um, you want to know how ripped off you're going to be? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> You're calling an election made sure. Another phrase the Mormons use that's secret. Even their own members don't know. Um, let me tell you that there are some people in the Mormon church who are more special <laughs> than the rest of you. <laughs> there are some people, and I'll talk very quietly because <laughs> my wife is here tonight. <laughs> there are some people that the general authorities contact and um, they come over to your house and tell you that you're going and that you've been chosen and uh, you're going to receive the second anointing and have your calling and election made sure <laughs> I don't know if Romney's had this ordinance <laughs> I don't know if his calling and election is that sure <laughs> he may lose I don't know anyway let me tell you about, <laughs> I have to read again. Let me tell you about your calling and election made sure, okay? This is from a gentleman uh, who had this ordinance and uh, he is reporting it directly on paper. Uh, and he says, my, my second anointing experience and now I'm a son of perdition. Uh, the son of perdition uh, is another <laughs> secret phrase of the Mormon Church that says that you um, have had an absolute uh, witness and testimony and personal relationship with the Holy Ghost and uh, Jesus Christ and if you ever ever deny it then you can become a son of perdition I guess perdition has to do with Satan or Lucifer. I'm not sure who the father <laughs> of perdition is because everyone is a son, <laughs> never a daughter of perdition either. The Mormon church doesn't do that. It just says that uh, you have become a son of perdition for publishing something uh, like this, your experience, okay? So these are the details of this individual and um, the uh, he says and I wish to emphasize to be on topic of the ordinance itself it is not to protect my anonymity from the church as the first president will be able to identify me from this account within minutes if not immediately so he knows you know the spies and the the uh, committee to strengthen the members <laughs> are not happy with him okay first of all you get an invitation and it's a personal it's not written because nothing is written because the apostles say that if the other members <laughs> of the church find out about this they'll be pissed <laughs> I can see why <laughs> you pay your tithing your whole life and you bow your head and say yes and you just are a faithful faithful person but uh, you didn't get this ordinance <laughs> the church is saying you're dog shit so anyway, you get the invitation, personal invitation from the apostles, and then there's the preparation, and then the day itself, what happened that day, uh, and he was asked to nominate others. <laughs> now, if this ain't <laughs> smelling a little bit like a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme, I don't know what is. So in other words, we gave this to you, nominate two more couples. It's kind of like when I was insurance and selling and I would always close the uh, sale and I'm saying, now two of your friends uh, who you think might be uh, possibly interested in getting the good deal you got tonight. So anyway, if there's a chain and uh, if you don't have higher ups <laughs> recommending you, you're not gonna get it. Okay, here's the second anointing. Here's the invitation. He, let's see, he's in April 2002, Elder Harold G. Hillman uh, of the First Presidency, uh, as president of the Europe West Area, called me to his office. 
Uh, he was said he was extending to me and his wife, she was not present, on behalf of President Hinckley, the Hinkster, <laughs> an invitation to receive a special blessing in the Preston, uh, England Temple. Uh, he asked whether I'd ever heard of the Second Endowment. <laughs> he goes, I don't know. He told me a few more people had received this and they must keep it secret. It is absolutely secret. Um, because if the other members of the church find out, it says, and said if the general membership knew about it, there would be a problem. <laughs> yes, there would. Because the general members go, hey, give me my tithing back. I didn't get the full blessings of the temple. So and they don't give refunds, as you know. Um, more would want to receive the ordinance. I, I wonder why than the apostles uh, had time to do. Um, to accommodate that many people. I'm just going to skim over part of it because most of you that are Mormons are pissed right now. You're probably kicking the computer going, he's lying. He's No, I'm not lying. It's true. Uh, I remember being at BYU that um, uh, my teacher, Truman Madsen, mentioned this to a class one day. And the next day, <laughs> he never said another word about it. Uh, he told me that a few people received the blessing. It must be kept secret. Uh, he recommended that I read uh, Elder Bruce R. McConkie, uh, his writings on making your calling and election sure. <laughs> well, Bruce R. McConkie's book, uh, Mormon Doctrine, is out of print. <laughs> the Mormon Church won't even print another edition. And you can't even get it in Deseret Bookstore. And the Mormon Church is backing totally away from McConkie's um, Mormon Doctrine because some of his comments about dark-skinned people and oh my god it goes on and on and the Mormon church goes well McConkey now we don't want you hearing what he has to say um, he said it would be a life-changing experience <laughs> well this video is going to be a life-changing experience for many of you that are gonna go to the bishop and the stake president and go hey hey <laughs> you're gonna and the state president's going to go, no, no, he's lying. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Hey, take it for what you want to take it. Okay. Uh, it said this. He said the ordinance was prefer, uh, performed in Joseph Smith's time, but had been discontinued during President uh, David O. McKay's time. This resulted in, uh, I have to, this resulted in no source that quotes this suspension of the ordinance, only Elder Hillam's word. We were to be at the president's office on such and such a time. Okay, so they were uh, preparing to do it and they had to read the, the scriptures and and um, unpardonable sin and learn all about being a son of perdition. I think I've got that automatically and I didn't even have to have uh, my feet washed here. Um, that he had to be a better person and dedicated to the general authorities. Uh, and the, the general authorities have, have had, <laughs> and many mission presidents and some stake presidents have had this ordinance. And so if you're, well, if you're a bishop or a stake president, uh, I'm not sure you'd be watching my videos, but you members go and ask your bishops and stake presidents, uh, is David lying about this? Um, he was not allowed to tell his children <laughs> where he was going. And he said he was uncomfortable about being told to lie. But God, if you're an Upper Mormon uh, authority lying, you know, as part of the second, second anointing here. Uh, so anyway, he went in and uh, he said he wasn't comfortable lying for the Lord. Well, <laughs> he's not cut out for being a church authority. If he's uncomfortable lying for the Lord, uh, this ain't gonna fly. But anyway, that's what he said, okay. Um, is he said it's been nearly six years and now he's reporting this and uh, he says, you know, I don't have a perfect memory, but I'll tell you what went on. Uh, number one was the ordinance of washing uh, of the feet. I was beckoned to sit in a particular chair, an elder uh, ballad uh, kneeled down, washed my feet, and then dried them. And uh, the second thing was the uh, ordinance of the second anointing, part one. Uh, I was anointed with oil on the top of my head, and then hands were laid upon my head, and I was ordained. Now, when you're in um, the uh, temple for your own endowments and for the dead, too, when you um, are anointed, it says you're to become a king and a priest in the future okay 
This ordinance here says, I was ordained a king and a priest unto the Most High God to rule and reign uh, in the house of Israel for heaven, uh, forever. Uh, my head and my brows and my lips and the Mormons touch everything with <laughs> the oil. And uh, this, uh, this ordinance gave me the fullness of the priesthood and a blessing was given which included sealing powers to bind and lose, curse and bless. So he could curse people, kind of like the voodoo doll, I guess. Blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Holy Spirit of promise bestowed. <laughs> what the hell is that? I have heard that phrase for over a half a century. I'm a BYU graduate, four years of seminary, and active in the church for a half. I never know what the Holy Spirit of promise is. Uh, bestowed. Uh, it, <laughs> I've had the Holy Ghost bestowed upon me, and in that ordinance uh, in public, they'll say, and receive the Holy Ghost. Um, so I don't know what the Holy Spirit of promise is, and that's bestowed by the laying on of hands. Uh, blessed to live as long as life is desirable. <laughs> that's a good blessing. So if life isn't desirable, uh, you're going to die. Uh, blessed to obtain unto the Godhood power to be a member of a godhood bestowed so in your own world uh, as a mormon uh, you're going to be elohim or jesus or the holy ghost <laughs> i don't know how you figure it out you throw a dice i don't know if you raise your hand but anyway you're ordained uh to have um uh, being a godhood power to be a member of the godhood and sealed up to eternal life power to have the heavens open so there it is, the you know, windows of blessings of heaven, that's tithing. But anyway, they get a little special blessing on that one. Uh, we were charged not to reveal to other individuals that we had received this ordinance. My wife was also anointed and ordained a queen and a priestess. And again, in the uh, regular anointings, those are words that are said for the future. Here, there are already kings and priests and uh, queens under the most high God. Uh, here we go, part two. Uh, the second part of the anointing was explained to me and my wife. Um, and we had to go to another ceiling room. There was a bowl of water and a towel and my wife <laughs> washed my feet like and then they put in quotes to, to, to show you know this is certainly <laughs> biblically bound uh, and supported as Mary did to Jesus and dry them. Uh, she then placed her hands upon my head. Now I have never in all of the years I've heard about Mormons and been in the church a half a century, I've never heard of the women laying their hands on somebody's head like the priesthood holders and giving them a blessing. They're, they're not supposed to have the priesthood. Do they have it? Don't they have it? Now their hands are on? Hey, it doesn't matter because this is going to be a life-changing experience. So. Um, it says here, uh, she would then place her hands upon my head and pronounce a blessing upon me as the Spirit directed. In other words, she just kind of made it up and thinks that God is telling her to say these things. So that's what she says. Okay, this was a very moving and personal experience for us. Uh, following this, we met in the celestial room with Elder Ballard, and he summarized what had happened to us and questions and uh, if we had any, whatever. I had stated earlier some of the things mentioned in the blessing uh, given to me. I cannot recall everything, and I did not record it, of course. You'd really be in trouble if you recorded it. Um, Brigham Young proceeded to anoint uh, Brother Kimball. He received Kimball. <laughs> this is the, <laughs> the great father that gave up his 14-year-old uh, daughter uh, for uh, Joseph Smith's personal pleasure of intercourse and marriage to his daughter because Joseph wanted his wife and Hebrew goes hey you know let's cut a deal here let me keep my wife take my child so Brigham Young gave this to Hebrew C. Kimball imagine if if um, <laughs> little um, uh, oh, I think her name is Helen Marr uh, Kimball if she'd seen this going on for her father, she probably would have slapped the crap out of him. But anyway, uh, he abandoned her and gave uh, it to a 30, uh, 37, 8-year-old man. Um, uh, it, you know, it goes on, what you bind on heaven, heaven you shall loose on heaven, uh, and whomsoever you curse will be cursed. And, uh, you know, it goes back. 
as far as the priesthood, I say unto you to uh, live a good uh, old age, um, even three score and ten. I think three score and ten is 70, if I'm not wrong. So, God, you know, I'm not probably going to make 70, so <laughs> I need this. Can I go next? I don't know. Um, it says here to... Uh, uh, that you will have the power to redeem thy progenitors. In other words, you're going to be Jesus and resurrect uh, your family and your friends. <laughs> Maybe I should <laughs> get to know this guy so I could get in there. I don't know. Uh, he then anointed Sister uh, Valerie Kimball, a queen and a priestess, unto her husband. This is Brigham Young uh, doing this, and that's written by John D. Lee, who had personal knowledge. Uh, the, the, and now here's the nomination for the ordinance. Here he's asked um, by the authorities um, to fast and pray and to give uh, two more references that they could get the ordinance and the rest of you can't. But keep paying your tithing, uh, that's important. Uh, and then the aftermath, uh, 17 months later in October 2003, I was studying in preparation for serving a full-time mission with my wife. Uh, since June 2001, I've been told by the general authorities of the church when I was ready to submit my papers, they would recommend me as a mission president. Well, that's a good thing, I guess. I decided there was one question regarding the Book of Mormon. I had answered many times before, but I doubted anyone with good scientific background would accept such an answer. As I considered God... Uh, would not prevent someone joining the church simply because of, of uh, scientific uh, information. I studied to find out an acceptable answer, which I assumed would be to demonstrate the flaws in the scientific hypothesis. I wanted to answer for myself, to teach others, and my missionaries, if I was declared a mission president, not for one minute at uh, that time did I think the church was false. I knew, and now I, you watch my video, beyond a shadow of any doubt. See, he's got his Mormon phraseology all down. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt it was true. I just needed to know what was wrong with the currently held scientific views. Uh, maybe DNA, maybe not finding any relics of the Book of Mormon, and uh, Reformed Egyptian doesn't ex You know, there's a few things there that he kind of wanted an answer to. Uh, after studying the specific scientific methodology, to my amazement, uh, it stood up. It stood up. I knew. Uh, let's see. These were not simply hypotheses and theories of scientists, but demonstrable facts like DNA and and uh, not finding any relics. I believe God to be the master scientist. How else could the Creator, He, the Creator of all things, therefore? Therefore, true science cannot be in conflict with his revealed word. So, you know, this guy now is in his brain, his right, uh, left side of the brain clicks on and he goes, you know, this doesn't make sense. Uh, this led me to consider in more depth others, uh, other claims of the church and discuss them with two general authorities. Uh, this reminds me a little bit of uh, some of the reports that Steve Benson uh, has. He has a wonderful story on uh, more, uh, recovery Mormonism uh, about uh, meeting with Dallin Oaks and uh, someone else that you know pretty much admitted to Steve that some of this was a hoax. You ought to look that up and read it. It's kind of interesting. This led me to consider in more uh, depth other claims of the church and to discuss them with two general authorities and consult two Brigham Young University professors. Conclusion, the church was not true. I had allowed myself to be deceived. If anyone is interested, I will give you an account of that journey of discovery and ramifications for my family uh, and myself another time. So, you know, I just found this to be uh, somewhat interesting. It was interesting to me. And <laughs> I've heard of the calling an election made sure, but I never got one. So maybe they'll see my video and go, hey, you know, we feel sorry for David. <laughs> Let's wash his feet, okay? So anyway, um, this is an example of the extreme um, hypoth uh, uh, <laughs> hip 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 uh, hip <laughs> The Lord is binding my tongue. <laughs> Being hypocrites. That's what this is an example of. That the Mormon Church kind of says everybody is free and and uh, we're all treated equally. And uh, I've been out, you know, five, seven, eight years. So um, I'm not saying I'm a member, 
But anyway, the rest of you who are paying your tithing, who have had your uh, temple endowments, and and uh, you're called to be bishops and mission presidents and, and um, other things, uh, you didn't get this ordinance, and you probably won't. <laughs> Just pay your tithing and go to the mall and buy things so that the, the profit can um, profit. <laughs> so anyway, there is the uh, calling and election made sure, the second anointing, and you, uh, if you got one, you're one of the in boys. <laughs> if you don't have one, I'd be doing one of these. <laughs> Why not me?